A couple of weeks ago, I tried to break this M2 Pro Mac Mini with music production and I failed. However, you guys had some tips on how to really make this thing sweat. So I'm back. In the first video where I tried to break this M2 Pro Mac Mini, I basically took a whole bunch of tracks in Logic and copied them and kept copying them. And they contained some fairly heavy plugins and virtual instruments, but a lot of them didn't contain any MIDI data. And as you guys rightfully pointed out, that doesn't fully stress test the CPU. That's a fair point, but I still think it was an interesting test. But I do know that I could go further with this. And to be completely honest with you guys, that first video was a bit of a test. Test. This is the first series that I've done in music production. I have no idea if people are interested in it. The good news is that people clearly are. So I've taken on board all of your feedback in terms of how I should really test this thing now, and I'm going to do that in this video. The M2 Pro Mac Mini that I'm using for this is the base model version. So it's got the 16 gig of unified memory, the 512 gig SSD, and it's running Mac OS Ventura, the latest version. I'm also using the latest version of Logic Pro. There's nothing else running in the background, no other apps running apart from Splice, which is used for some of the plugins that I'm using. I'm using iStat menus at the top to monitor the CPU and the memory resources. That's one thing that I didn't do in the first video, which I'm gonna do in this one. Some of you asked what the buffer size is and I can confirm that it's 128 and I'm starting this test with a 23 track composition which is made up of four tracks of audio. I know that's not many but that's what I've got to work with at the moment and the rest are MIDI and I've put together a little track that lasts 3 minutes and 17 seconds and none of these tracks are empty. All of them have something on them. In terms of the plugins and the virtual instruments that I'm using, I've had to make a list. It includes Omnisphere, Arturia stuff like the DX7, Korg stuff like the Triton and the Poly 6, Massive X from Native Instruments, a bunch of samples that are running through the Logic built-in sampler, sound toys, stuff from Waves, including SSL channel strips and compressors, that kind of thing, and then a few things from Baby Audio and also Valhalla. These are all fairly chunky things. So. Let's get into it. Okay, so this is completely unrehearsed. I haven't tried this already. I've got no idea what's gonna happen. So we're gonna start with basically duplicating the tracks that I've already got. So I've got 23 tracks, like I mentioned, and they do contain all sorts of things going on. There's lots of fairly heavy duty stuff going on here, guys. So I'm, I think I'm already pushing the Mac a little bit, hopefully. Um, if we look at the iStat menus, what have we got on here? If we go into memory, memory pressure is 41%. The CPU cores, as we can see at the top, look fairly chilled out. That doesn't look too bad, really. I, yeah, 83% idle. It's quite happy. I mean, if I, can't, if, I, if I start playing something, if we start playing this back, that has very little in... Yeah, very little impact on it at all, really. Memory pressure, still pretty much much the same. There's still 82% 80, of the CPU is still idle. This thing, basically, at the moment, is just chilling out. It's quite happy. Right, let's start duplicating some tracks. I'm going to do this fairly randomly, but I have noted down what's on each track, so I can, can, I can kind of identify the things that have got the most potential to, to kill this thing. So let's start. Massive X, that's quite a significant synth so let's duplicate that logic pro makes this very easy so we've done one two three four five six seven i've added seven massive x's in there and i'm going to take the stuff that i placed into that first track and i'm basically going to duplicate it so we've got the same midi data going through here because that does make a difference you were all right when you said that you, it is totally true if the track isn't doing anything if you've got all the instruments and the plugins on the track but there's no midi data in there you're not really pushing it so i've just added seven additional massive x's this will sound horrible so you, you won't hear too much you won't hear this thankfully but um let's play that back played back immediately no pausing at all um, if I bring up all of those massive X's, let's have a look. It's still playing. Let me put this on a loop so we're not going to run out of anything. Let's put their loop there. Let's bring up each of these massive X's. They're opening fairly quickly. And it's also important to bear in mind, guys, that this isn't just massive X. I've also got a 
Comeback Kid on here, which is a baby audio plugin. I've got Valhalla Room. I've also got a CLA compressor and an SSL channel strip. And that's on all of those seven or eight, whatever it is, Massive X uh, channels. And it's they're all playing. They're all there. It's playing. I can stop it. It stops immediately. I can play it again. While it's playing, I can see that the CPU usage has increased a little bit. So that the, the, the each each of the CPU cores are now being put to use a little bit. The idle has gone down to 61%. Memory pressure, 47%. That's still chilling out, really, isn't it? It's it's okay, isn't it? It's not it's not bothered still. Okay, fine. Let me stop this and close all of these. Okay, next up, I'm going to duplicate a whole bunch of Omnisphere tracks. And Omnisphere is a pretty serious synth. So I think it uses quite a bit of memory and CPU. People will probably tell me differently, but I'm fairly sure that's the case. So we'll take this track here that has got some data on it. And again, let's do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, Oh, Beach Ball. You won't see the Beach Ball on the screen recording, by the way, because for whatever reason, the macOS screen recording doesn't pick up that. Now, this happened on the first test, actually. I duplicated loads of DX7s, and it kind of did this where it paused and thought about it for ages, and eventually it came back, and it was back to, to normal. So I'm wondering if that's going to be the same thing with this. I mean, if this was a real session, if I was, if I was a proper music producer and this track meant something to me, then... I would have to crash out now and start again. In fact, let's do that because that's a proper test, isn't it? We'll see what happens once I reopen it. Right, Logic Pro is gone. This will be interesting to see what it loads back up because I didn't save that. It may just load up the previous save point. Ah, so Logic Pro has auto saved a version. That will be the one with all those Omnispheres on it. Let's give it a go. Give me the auto saved one. So here we go. It's loading everything. Ah, it's loaded it. Okay. It okay. The 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 save didn't include those omnispheres. So I'm back to where I was with all of the massive X's. Okay. Is it still working? Let's just try this. It is. Yep. Okay. We're back to where we were. Okay. So omnisphere might have broken it. Let's add five more omnispheres. So one, two, three, four, five. And if I go into the mixer we can see them being added it's done them already actually has it yeah it's added them already and again it isn't just omnisphere it's omnisphere it's decapitator it's the i love new york compressor from baby audio and it's a one knob pumper which yeah all of those plugins are across those five additional plus the original omnisphere track so they're all there. Let's now duplicate the MIDI data. So they're all doing something now. Play them back. Still working. So we've got six Omnispheres there. No problem at all. I'm going to add some more Omnispheres. Let's go for it. Let's just let's assume the last thing was a bit of a, a bit of an error. One, two, three, four. That's ten Omnispheres in total. Has it loaded them up? Yep, they're all there. It's loaded them up very quickly, to be fair. Okay, and let's play it back. Ooh. Oh, it's, it's all okay. It's fine. I, I, I was worried there was some kind of weird audio glitch, but it's there's that many Omnispheres, it's just distorting, so that's fine. In terms of the memory usage, let's have a quick look. 46%, it's just chilling out, guys. No problems there whatsoever. Okay, fine. Let's, uh, let's duplicate some more. Let's do the DX7s like I did last time, so... Let's just do, let's do 10 more of them. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Let's play back. Play back immediate. They're all playing. Let's double check. Yeah, you can see there on the, on the mixer, they're all playing. Let's put everything else that's not there, actually. So let's put that over there, this over here. Okay, so as you can see, every single track has got something playing on it. It's a horrible arrangement. It will sound horrendous, so I won't play it back to you. But let's just, first of all, see if it plays straight away. No messing whatsoever. If we look at the mixer, every single track is playing, isn't it? Let's make sure. Yep, yeah, they're all playing. Let me just count how many tracks that is. 49 tracks. That's 49 tracks of stuff. And this thing is as responsive as ever. Yeah, let's increase the audio tracks. Okay, and let's play it back. I cannot hear 
fans of any kind. It's just absolutely chilled out. The mem sorry, the CPU cores, they are being put to work now a bit, as you can see here. But memory pressure, 49%. Memory just doesn't care. It's like, keep going, keep going. There's something else I can try. Okay, so I now have an hour of music, an hour of this terrible track that I've made, which you can see I've never seen a Logic timeline like this. It's, uh, it's just huge. So firstly, does it play back straight away? Have I lost audio? Oh no, I haven't. No, beg your pardon, it is working. It's because I've moved everything around. Wow. Um, it's playing. It's working. Let's go back to the mixer. Okay. Interest. Oh, no, okay. I was going to say that's interesting. I mean, the mixer slowed down then when I went into it, but it's... The mixer's definitely a bit slower. When I say that, I mean that the, the meters on these tracks, they're okay now, but if we go back to that massive kind of... this bit here, they start to... it's lagging a bit now, actually. It is lagging a little bit, which it wasn't doing before when the track was 3 minutes and 17 seconds long. Now it's an hour long. It's still very responsive. Wow. This M2 Pro Mac Mini cost me £1,399, and I think what I've just done with it is absolutely incredible. I've listened to your feedback, I've added MIDI data to every single channel, I've made the composition, if you can call it that, an hour long. It still works, you know, I can still hit the spacebar and immediately stuff plays back. Firstly, if you're thinking about buying an M2 Pro Mac Mini for music production, and you're, you're thinking, do I buy this or the Mac Studio, which I know a lot of you are, I'd get this. I would save yourself some money. Don't get the Mac Studio. Get yourself the M2 Pro Mac Mini. But I'd love to make lots more music production related content because clearly you want it. I enjoy making it and, well, let me know in the comments what you want to see next. And if you've still got time and you want to find out more about the M2 Pro Mac Mini, keep watching for a link to my full review.